This is Paw Print, an animal rescue community, episode 119. I'm Nancy Ree. And I'm Harold Ree. Today's guest is the talented filmmaker Casey Klonsky. You know, love shouldn't matter if it's a week or a year or a month. If you are able to give yourself your heart to that dog and really truly open up to that dog, then it should be the same. It's the same type of love, it's the same intensity. If you protect your heart and you don't open yourself up, then you never, you might not get hurt, but you may never, you might never love in the first place. On episode 111, we interviewed Jane Sobel Klonsky with her book, Unconditional, stories around people and their senior dog rescues. Well, in today's episode, her daughter, Casey, has joined forces with Jane to create a variety of videos, as well as a documentary film called Love Unleashed. We're so glad to have Casey on, sharing her story as a filmmaker, as well as her own thoughts on rescue. If you want to learn more about Casey Klonsky and Love Unleashed, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 119. That's the number 119. Love Unleashed actually was a film that came about as part of a, a larger project that I have been working on with my mom, who is a photographer. Um, who started photographing people and their senior dogs and really photographing the relationship between them um, and their special bond and connection. So I started working with her um, a few years into the project. And as a filmmaker, I started traveling around with her and interviewing her subjects. Um, And it turned into a video series that we have, which is online and we're still working on that. And we have a new video every couple of weeks or so. And for me, that really opened up this big kind of like window into all the possibilities of these stories of people and how to stitch them all together. And it just, there was so much to tell. So I started to work on this longer film, which is Love Unleashed, um, that's been in festivals last for the past year. Great. So how did you go from these, you know, shorter segments to actually kind of putting them all together to make a cohesive short film? Well, it was something that I'd sort of always wanted to do in the back of my mind, kind of like halfway through the filming process, which was over the course of a couple of years. I had always thought about doing something about combining them all, but it was not um, it was not really planned. So there, the narrative itself wasn't planned during the, before the shooting process or even during the shooting process. And it really happened in, in the post-production. So I really sat down with all my material and I I tried to find a story to tell, yeah. which took a lot of different revisions and um, different edits until we felt like we had a good story. What particular stories were memorable to you or were your favorites? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, there are a few, I think, I, I mean, I, I love all of the people that we've interviewed. Um, certain dogs stand out to me as being very compelling and interesting because some of them have incredible jobs. Um, and there have been some dogs that I've had the honor of photographing, the pleasure of photographing recently that I haven't finished their edits yet, but I am working on it. And one dog in particular we photographed this past summer, we've gotten very into working dogs. Um, and I think that's, that's something that we're very compelled to work in the future towards um, sharing more stories of dogs who actually help, in society by giving back, by having a job. Um, we got to photograph this dog that actually works with scientists on a boat off the coast of the San Juan Islands, whose job it is to get in the boat and smell killer whale scat and actually tell the scientists how to find the killer whale scat in the water so that they can get to it and put it into these old test tubes and run all these tests on it and then hopefully figure out what's going on with the killer whales, um, their stress levels, their, their food toxins, their everything, um, you know, the pollution levels, how it's affecting them, rather than having to put probes in the whale, which is what they've been doing until now. Um, and so this dog, without having any idea, the dog doesn't know, obviously, that it's doing this amazing thing, um, but, it, but it has this job that is helping to save the lives of whales, which is amazing. So I think stories like that really get me excited. Um, And obviously the dog and the handler have a really amazing relationship, but um, the dog is actually helping another species. 
That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, really and, cool. And is that one in, included in Love Unleashed, or is that something that, that, that a project that you're still working on? That one's not. It's one of our newer ones, so hopefully everyone can get excited and check it out when it comes out okay. in the next couple months. Yeah, so that's a, that's a new story. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, yeah. So it, with the whole film festival circuit, I mean, um, one, I mean, what's the response been? What's the comment? What's the commentary been like? The response has been pretty great. Um, I think one thing people really appreciate right now especially in our, in today's world is having a, being able to, to, to hear stories that are uplifting. And that was really my goal in this is that it's very easy today to tell stories that are, that are dark, um, that are controversial, that are, you know, maybe spark people's interest, but don't necessarily make them feel good. And I think there's such a need for stories today that inspire people. Um, and especially when we're talking about relationships and love um our, my I think the goal of the whole project is really to make people at the end of the day feel good and inspired and want to go love someone or something um whether it be an older dog or you know a different kind of animal or just your partner or a friend it's that's our goal is to really like show how love can bring joy to your life and it can really make people better um, and so that is, for us, it was the really important message today to, to share that um, and to really focus on the positive side of those relationships. We're speaking to Casey Klonsky, filmmaker behind the film Love Unleashed. When I see some of your videos, what's kind of always, I mean, very touching and very moving, one of your subjects, uh, he or she will just start like just tearing up and just crying, just just talking about these dogs. What do you think it is about that kind of when people reveal themselves to you, that that really brings out that emotion. I think every person's different. So I don't think there's there one reason why somebody cries versus another subject is totally different, probably. Um, but to me, I am so humbled when somebody becomes that open and and honest with me during an interview. But I think that the subject. Um, sort of naturally lends itself to being one that um, will bring out emotion in people. Right. And I think that, you know, one of my favorite parts about this whole project is really seeing how people, people's, you know, attitude and, and emotion and, um, and just um, current like demeanor really truly changes when they start talking about their dogs in so many ways um, from, you know, I've seen people that just, um, whether they're having a bad day or, you know, they're, they're not very emotional or open at first. And then the second we sit down and I ask them about their dogs, everything changes and a smile just like lights up on their face and it, everything else just kind of melts away. And it's just so much easier for people to talk about some of the really big, serious issues and, and challenges in life, like the idea of growing older and you know, eventually thinking about death. Um, it's easier for people to talk about when they're talking about it in terms of a dog than when we talk about it in terms of our lives or other humans. And so I f have found that um, sort of this, this kind of like barrier gets lifted and that people are able to be a bit more honest when they're talking about their dogs. And it, and it does, I find that, you know, with the crying, which tends to happen, um, and, and hopefully they're most of the time they're, they're happy tears, oh, but yeah. I think that, yeah. that it's the natural, um, you know, course of the project being about senior dogs is some people have never really thought about losing their dog before. Yeah. So this is maybe the first time that they're, you know, I ask them about certain questions that kind of like spark that thought that, oh, their dog really is getting old. And then it kind of hits them in a different way. And, um, that can be really hard. Um, but also really beautiful to, to think about, to actually be able to take the time to reflect on, you know, your dog's life in a way that you maybe never have before. Yeah. So no, I hope that sort of answers no, the question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, you know, I guess, I guess one of the reasons why I may have been asking that is that as I was watching some of your, your videos, I was thinking to myself, huh, I wonder what, how I would, I would react. And I think I would break down too. I mean, I think I would get really emotional and feel super vulnerable, but as you said, in a re very positive way. So so, so yeah. thanks for sharing that. Yeah, we try to make them all happy tears. Yeah. And not sad tears. <laughs> Absolutely. So how'd you get into filmmaking? Um, I think it was probably a pretty natural 
progression in life as my parents are photographers. And I don't think I um, really connected the dots until later in life, which is kind of funny. But I grew up traveling with them on shoots when I was younger and sort of helping out, sometimes being in front of the camera when I was little. And then it it really occurred to me um, somewhere along the line when I was younger that what I was really interested in was um, filmmaking. And it was sort of, for as long as I can remember, I decided like I wanted to make films and moving images and everything that went along with that. And so I wanted to go to film school. I don't really remember wanting to do anything else before that. (laughs) Okay. All right. So where'd you end up going to film school? I went to NYU to Tisch, um, where I studied film. And then by the time I, it was film and production, um, was my degree. But by the time I was a senior, I was really had a focus on documentary. It was sort of, you know, the direction that I wanted to go. Any sort of uh, mentors or any kind of inspirations for you when it came to documentary filmmaking? Um, I was really fortunate enough when I was studying at NYU that I was able to work with Morgan Spurlock. Um, And he was really like, he was a mentor to me and actually a big inspiration. Um, And that was an amazing place to grow and learn while I was at school as well, um, to learn from someone like him. So he really inspired me to kind of go after documentary filmmaking in a whole you know, separate way. That's awesome that you're saying that because, well, I have my own kind of personal story, but, um, but, uh, Super Size Me was definitely a, uh, influential film on, on me and, and just sort of different little decisions I've made. Uh, oh, that's at, really at, cool. At, well, at least like, like health wise, right? So, right. Yeah. Hopefully it inspired a lot of people. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a pretty amazing guy. And so working with him was, was special. Um, and it definitely inspired me to continue pushing documentary and to feel like there's a, you know, a career opportunity in it too, because that, that can be hard with documentary to sometimes like see that possibility. So that actually leads me to my, my next question, which is, you know, in this age of digital, someone with a, a phone can make a video, you know, load it up onto YouTube and, and in some cases, right, get, get just thousands and thousands, maybe even millions of, of uh, people watching. So much is being produced now at such a faster rate. What do you think it takes to actually survive in the business of filmmaking or to thrive even? Hmm. When I figure that out, I'll tell you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's really true. I think you nailed it on the head. Um, and I think that if we all had the answer to that now, um, life would probably be really easy. Right. I think one of the hard things about film today is that the medium and the the keys to success, like the formula to having a film that's successful is completely changing all the time, or it didn't used to. There was definitely like more of a concrete formula to how to produce the film, how to get it out in the world, what were all the steps to do it, and that no longer exists. Um, so there's almost like no right answers and it's always changing. And the competition is really fierce because anybody can make photos and movies now um, with almost no equipment. And so differentiating, your, reading, differentiating yourself can be really hard too. And it is, I mean, that would, that would be like the, the key struggle today of being a filmmaker. Yeah. So I, I won't even slightly pretend like I have all the answers. Sure, and sure. every day I figure out something different and you just have to keep pushing, but it's, um, that, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. W- w- when you find that crystal ball, let us know, right? I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, changing gears and going back to animal rescue, um, you know, growing up, any animals that inspired you or, 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 or that, that really made a difference on you? Oh, totally. Although I don't know if I have one in particular. Um, I always have grown up with animals we actually never had a rescue animal growing up. And it's funny because now my mom will say, she'll be the first one to say that, you know, her next dog is going to be a rescue. It just kind of never occurred to us. And it's definitely, when growing up, it wasn't that big on the East Coast to rescue dogs as much as it was to get them from a breeder. Um, so so we, I don't have a lot of great rescue stories. It's fine. It doesn't have to be a rescue story. And, and just to let you know, a lot of our guests have, have mentioned that, that they grew up with, with dogs that they purchased from breeders. And then it's only lately, right, that that rescue mm-hmm. has has sort of gotten to the uh, consciousness, right? Right. Yeah, it's it's true. I, it's, it's been interesting to watch that grow since starting this project. I, I've just it's become truly so much more prevalent. And it always, I think, has been on the West Coast more than the East Coast. 
but now I see that it's, you know, made its way to places where, you know, people always just used to get breeders, um, dogs from breeders, not think twice about it. I am seeing a lot more rescue, which is really cool. Um, and awareness around rescue, but I've always, we've always had dogs my whole life. And actually, I mean, I would say the dog that my mom has now, um, has been a huge influence, um, on my life and my love for animals. His name is Charlie. He's a golden doodle. And Charlie is truly part of the family. Um, he, I mean, we've always had tons of great dogs, but we have two now and one is a golden retriever and one's Charlie, the golden doodle. And, um, we always say that golden retriever is he's the dog of the house. And then Charlie is another person. And it's just so funny because he, he, he's sometimes smarter than we are. And it really kind of like reminds me whenever I'm with him that you can't assume that dogs don't know what's going on because sometimes they, they truly do know. Um, and they have so much emotion. Um, and not all dogs, I will admit, not all dogs, <laughs> but some dogs, like they know, they know what's up and you can't take that for granted at all. Um, and he's totally kind of like brings me back to that place of, um, awareness of why we have to be so good to our animals. Well, switching from, you know, uh, as you said, you know, getting used to to dogs growing up, not from rescue, but now entering the world of rescue uh, with your documentary and and and, uh, and different aspects. What's been your sort of impression of the animal rescue world or the animal rescue community at large? The animal rescue community is amazing. One of the things that struck me, we, I mean, we've been really lucky to be involved with some really wonderful rescue organizations and one in particular in the Bay Area that we've worked really closely with called Muttville Senior Dog Rescue. When we started working with them, this really like opened my eyes. Um, they have a program called Fospice Care, which I had never heard of before we started working with them, but it is a program that takes in dogs that are no longer, they're not adoptable because they are either so old or they're sick or, or some, something in their health means that they, they probably aren't adoptable and won't live that long. However, they have a program called FOSPIS. So they have people that volunteer to take dogs in as foster parents, but more for hospice, um, just to make this dog feel as comfortable in the end of their life um, for as long as they have. And there is actually a waiting list of FOSPIS um, people waiting for dogs to come. That is how many people through this program want to be able to, to provide this service for these animals. And, and that just blew my mind when I found that out. So I, I've been really fortunate to actually meet a bunch of these people and interview them and hear some of their stories and their experiences. And I think that one of my first questions to, you know, one of my subjects who was amazing, her name is Linda, and she is in my film. So you'll, you'll see her if you see Love Unleashed. But I asked her, you know, how, how can you, how can you do that? Right? Like, how can you take a dog in knowing that you might only have it for a short time? And isn't it just so heartbreaking? And Linda changed my entire perspective on senior dog rescue. And her response was truly incredible. It was that, you know, love shouldn't matter if it's a week or a year or a month. And if you are able to give yourself your heart to that dog and really truly open up to that dog, then it should be the same. It's the same type of love. It's the same intensity. And, you know, you don't, if you protect your heart and you don't open yourself up then you never get the chance of, of loving, you might, you might not get hurt, but you may never, you might never love in the first place. And this only happened after Linda had, you know, a dog that she lost and, and was heartbroken. And, she took some time to reflect and realized that if she never opened up again, she would never get to feel that way. So now she has this philosophy that, you know, whether I get to give, you know, this love to an animal for a week or a month, it's going to be that animal's best week or best month. Um, and that we're in such a, you know, amazing place to be able to give that to an animal and not to give it would be kind of a shame. And so I had never thought about senior rescue that way. I think there are a lot of people that are really hesitant to take in senior dogs because, you know, you don't know how long you're going to have them and you don't want to get too attached and it's too hard. I think that's probably the reason why certain people don't get dogs at all 
because dogs are not with us for very long in the scheme of things, but especially senior dogs. So I think, you know, if you kind of change your outlook on it, it really helps a lot. And, um, and Linda with Muttville Senior Rescue, she helped me see that. And I really just, it, it opened my eyes. And I've always wanted to pass her, her story on um, to other people. Casey, so well said. Thanks for sharing that. That was amazing. Um, yeah. How well, do she said it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> how, yeah. <laughs> well, you did a great job of recapping it. So. Thank you. How do folks find you? How do folks find Love Unleashed? You can go to our uh, Project Unconditional's website, which is projectunconditional.info. Um, and I we have links to all of our current um, videos that are online, the trailers online. We also have a Facebook page. It's called Unconditional Stories. The film itself, Love Unleashed, will be released soon, probably in the next couple of months. And we will be posting um, a countdown to that and where you can find it. And we'll point people in that direction. And until then, we have a web series. So you should tune in and see our web series. Unconditional Stories Facebook page is probably the best way to find it. And then, yeah, you can contact me through there. CaseyKlonsky.com is my website. And so if anyone wants to contact me directly, they're more than welcome. Um, Yeah, and we love to hear from new people, love people to share their stories about dogs and anything else. So I totally encourage people to reach out. Yeah. Well, last question. I mean, really probably making this film or making all these different videos in, in in a way for you must have been a crash course in animal rescue. Uh, knowing what you know now, uh, if you had that magic wand, what would you do to uh, to change the state of animal rescue? You know, I don't know if I would change the state of animal rescue. I think it's incredible that we have animal rescue. Um, just the other week, we we're in the Barry area, and I met someone someone who's a husband and wife team, and they actually take monthly trips in a van down to Mexico. They cross the border of Mexico. And they have um, they have this nonprofit, um, and they they pick up as many strays as they can from Mexico um, that otherwise would be going to you know very high kill shelters in Mexico, and they actually bring them back across the border, and they give them to homes when they get back up to California, and or up to the Bay Area, and almost all all of their dogs you know are adopted out really quickly, and we met a bunch of dogs, and some of them had recently you know had legs amputated or, um, they were missing, you know, eye because when he found them, they, they didn't have a leg or, you know, the leg was so badly broken. It, you know, had to be fixed. So he brings them up and gives them to the best vets that he can find and he has them fixed and then they find amazing homes. And this couple was so inspiring. I got to meet a bunch of the dogs that he had just recently brought back. And, um, that to me, like right there, stories like that about animal rescue today, like I wouldn't do a thing to change that. I, I would love to have you know, more people, um, or more, I would love to hear about more people doing that, but it's incredible to me that we have people doing that at all. So I think animal rescue is definitely going in a, in a very positive direction. And the awareness that's being spread is, is amazing. And so I would say to anybody involved or, you know, working with animal rescue, just you're doing an amazing job. And, and, um, there are lots of people that appreciate what you do and so many dogs appreciate it. So thank you. We want to say thank you to Casey Klonsky for sharing her story. If you want to learn more about Casey, go to her website, caseyklonsky.com, or go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 119. If you'd like to meet me or Nancy on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, search for the word, this is Pawprint, all one word. We just reached the thousand follower milestone on our Instagram page. So make sure to hit follow and join the conversation. If you'd like to listen to more episodes of Pawprint, you can find us on your favorite podcast app, such as Apple Podcasts, also known as iTunes, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio. Search for Pawprint Animal Rescue, and hit the subscribe button to get the latest episodes immediately. Stay tuned for our next couple episodes. We have a really special treat for any of you who have dealt with separation anxiety disorder. We have a special double bill. Irit Bloom, our favorite positive reinforcement dog trainer, has recorded a special episode just around separation anxiety. And right after that, one of the foremost experts in separation anxiety disorder, Milena Demartini, 
will be our next special guest. We hope you join us for this special double bill. We want to say thank you to all of you for sharing paw print with your friends and family. We've been listened to in over 120 countries and territories, and it's all due to your amazing support. So thank you. And remember, you spread a positive message of love and peace by saving an animal. Have a great day, everyone. And see you next time on Paw Print. Paw Print is a production of EVER Education. You can't handle the truth.